Greetings, this is Endless with VGMechanica.com. Let's get started playing EVE Online. I'm going to go through character creation with you, and I'm going to go through some of the tutorial missions with you. First of all, when you create a character, you need to choose a race. It's important to note that all races are human. So all choosing a race does really is just choose where you start and what kind of ships you can fly initially. But you can always fly anybody's ship once you train the skills for it, and we'll go over that in a bit. Um, Amar are a religious race that keeps slaves. Those slaves happen to be Mimitar. Mimitar are a tribal race. Uh, these are the free Mimitar you play. Uh, the Mimitar Republic. Then the Kaldari are a super corporation. So they're all about money, money, money. And the Galente is the last true democracy. So they uh, elected leaders, peace, freedom, all that kind of stuff. So they're all equally strong in theory. You just kind of choose the one you like the look of and like the ship. Whenever you click one, it gives you an overview of that race, a little bit of backstory. Let's see. The only true democracy of New Eden, the Galente Federation is a powerful and prosperous multicultural dominion that welcomes outsiders with open arms. Intolerant of closed societies, the Galente are fierce defenders of personal and social liberties. So you get that story for each race. I'm not going to go through all of them when you create a character. Uh, you can go ahead and look at anyone you want. Once you pick a race, you get a sub-race. Actually, I'm going to go with Mimitar. So you get to pick a, a sub-race within it. And it really just kind of dictates which planet from within that race you, you came from and kind of picks your starting skills. Ultimately, it has no bearing on where you can end up training your character. But when you start out, you start out with different skills. Also, choosing a different bloodline gives you different options in terms of how your character is going to look. So there are three bloodlines per race. So that's three different looks you can have. And then also there's male and female. Uh, so I'm going to choose female. So you get to the character generation. Uh, it looks pretty good. They're actually about to improve it one of these days. I like to go through the morph a couple times until I see something I like. And then you can go through random options. Kind of like that, except... Uh, You can change the light. So you, basically all you're doing here is you're choosing your character portrait. Um, once you get through here, you're never really going to interact with your character again um, until there's this cur there's coming expansion, which we'll let you. But we're not going to go into that tonight. Uh, so you can kind of pose yourself, choose where your eyes are looking, change your eye color. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Choose your name. You can put a space in the name, which allows for first name and last name. I'm going to go with Endless Dream, uh, Endless Nerd, as that's my, uh, that's, well, that's my YouTube name. So, we we'll go ahead and create the character. So, this is the character I just created. I know I have another one there. That's another one I created earlier. So, you click on them to get started. So it's going to start you out in space, normally, and then it's going to give you the crash course. Uh, so definitely go through the crash course, read it. I'm going to go through it with you here. So it's telling you how to use this by pushing next and back. So it's saying that throughout the tutorials, it'll give you items in your cargo bay. Every button, if you highlight it, tells you what it is. So that's your cargo bay. Also, there's a bunch of buttons over here, and they all tell you what they are. So, cargo bay just opens up your ship's cargo bay. There's nothing in it right now. So, if you ever need help, you can always go back to the tutorials. The game has a pretty extensive tutorial line. Uh, and then there's also Evelopedia. So, you go through next. So, it's telling you that left button selects things, obviously. 
So right button is almost your most important button next to left. Right clicking brings up contextual menus. So wherever you click, if you click out into space, it will let you select any of the planets to warp to, stations, things like that. If you click on your ship, you get your s specific stuff, eject, self-destruct, uh, stop, things like that. Enter your warp uh, autopilots. And if you right click on other ships, you can approach them, orbit them, lock target. So just right click on everything. Uh, it doesn't hurt and you can get all sorts of your options. Also, those options are available up here when you left click on it. So when you want to look around, just left click anywhere in space and drag. And this is how you spin around your ship. Your middle mouse wheel will zoom in and out. If you don't have a middle mouse wheel, uh, if you hold left and right click, it'll accomplish the same goal, just forward and back. And then right clicking in space kind of chooses your camera angle. So you can kind of look around. Mostly you'll use left click just to look around. Um, I like to zoom really far out and then uh, that might be off for you, but you turn on your tactical overlay and it kind of gives you a good r idea of what's happening around you. And you're always dead center. You kind of vanish. You can zoom so far out even though you're this ship. This is your starting ship. Every race has its own starting ship. They're not very pretty, but they get the job done. And every... yeah, and they're free. Yeah, it's just telling you to like, scroll with the mouse wheel. Okay, so it's just put something in the cargo hold to get started. So the civilian damage control, and that's a module that you can equip on your ship. So it's telling me to right click on it and go to show info. And then prerequisites tab. So every time you show info on something, it gives you the description of it if it's an item. If it's something that's equipable, it'll give you all the attributes and tell you what it does for you. And this increases your resistances, which basically like armor. Uh, what it uses on your ship, and we'll go over that in a bit and the skills you need in order to use it. The X means I do not have hull upgrades yet. So we're gonna click next. So what the tutorial just is, they gave us hull upgrades. So they, what I want us to do is to train that skill. So whenever you get a skill book, you can right click on it and train that skill. So I'm gonna train it now to level one. Training in EVE is time-based. So your character sheet is up here, and these are all your skills. That skill I just trained is here in Mechanic. You can see one in Q, and it's whole upgrades, and it will train in 20 minutes. So if you would like a better idea to imagine how this works, think The Matrix, when uh, Neo was downloading Kung Fu, and how it like, took all day. So it just takes a while to absorb this amount of knowledge really that straightforward. Every skill trains like that. If I were to log off, it would still keep training. In 20 minutes, whole upgrades would be trained. As you can see, uh, like Mechanic 3 is 4 hours. Uh, small projectiles would be a day to take it up a skill. But yeah, that's all it is. is you, you right click on it and you can train it. And you just wait till it's done and you train the next one. they want me to close the cargo window. Alright, I think I got ahead of it. Yep. Okay, it's going to go over this, but first I want to show you the skill queue, because that'll be done in 20 minutes, and you'll probably be doing tutorials and stuff, and you'll get this cool little thing that says skill training completed. But let's say you're going to log out, and you're not going to be until tomorrow. Well, you don't want to log in in 20 minutes just so you can set another skill. So that's what the training queue does. It allows you to put up to a day's worth of skills in here. So let's say I want to do mechanic next. So now 
when it's done with hull upgrades, it'll start training mechanic. Uh, and every skill tells you what it does for you on top of allowing you to use other items. This one gives you more armor, so your armor hit points go up. Mechanic gives you more structure, or I say hull, but it's interchangeable. So I'm going to apply that. So now I have a five hour queue going. And you can keep adding them and adding them. So now it wants me to show you this big menu here. This is important. Whenever you do in combat, you're going to pay attention to this. The very you'll see all these different bars here. So the top one is your shields. So I'm at 100%. I have 79 shields left. It's not very much, but I'm just a little starter ship. I have 173 armor. Third one is structure. So basically, it's going to start turning red as you take damage. Uh, if it starts to get to the third one, that means it's time to run away. This is your capacitor, or the amount of power your ship has. The more you shoot at things, they use your capacitor, also different modules you'll end up installing. And that'll go through your capacitor, and when that goes to zero, it's going to empty out. Now luckily, we basically have uh, unlimited energy in these ships, so the capacitor will recharge itself. You just have to stop shooting for a little bit. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we also have the speed right here. I'm not moving, but I can go to max speed. So I'm going to go up to 392 meters a second. And that's pretty dang quick. Um, but since we're in space and everything's huge, it actually looks pretty dang small. So we're going to stop that and we're going to go to next. So yeah, it's telling you to click on any item in space and it will show up here so we can orbit it oh, we got this red thing that's gonna be an enemy it wants us to fight in a bit we can orbit it it's not gonna fight back so you'll see these items here approach basically gets you right up to it your nose touches it as close as you can and you just stick with it uh, uh, orbit you can set a range of how close you want to orbit something in this case, a thousand meters. And you're just going to circle around it. You keep it range on things that might be moving slower than you if you don't want to get too close. Let's say some of the bigger weapons, if you get too close, they're not as effective. You'll keep at range, and I won't get any closer than 500 meters here. This is the target. Okay. So you can lock target. In this case, it takes a certain amount of time to lock it down. And now it's here. So now I can do things like shoot at it, or if it were a friendly, I can heal them or repair them. Uh, just be really careful with target. Don't target other players because it gives them permission to kill you. Um, that is all, until you start getting into PvP. And now it's shooting at me because it's, it's thinking I'm going to attack it, which is totally legit, which is fine. It's doing so little damage, I'm not going to worry about it right now. But you see how it's got red rings around it, or red brackets that means it has targeted and is firing at me so let's see what it says now yeah you can right click on it for the contextual menu control space bars quick stop or you can stop by clicking this it wants me to stop the ship okay so now it wants us to go through basic combat so I'm gonna orbit this guy full speed So it wants me to orbit at 500 meters. So for my gun, and you can always right click on your gun and show info if you want to know, and you look for optimal range. So optimal range for this one is within 750 meters. So in order for it to be as, as effective as it can be, I'm going to set default distance to 500 meters. And then we're going to click it again, and I should start orbiting at 500 meters. So lock target. It's telling me lock target. Yeah. yeah, you always need to lock. If I were to click on them and then click the shoot button, it would auto-target at the same time. And I can show you that. So I'm going to unlock the target. And for the tutorial, it's telling you who to lock on to. Um, never does that in the normal game, so it's a good little thing for the tutorial. So... Now I click that and clicked him, so it's going to lock him again. It's going to start shooting right away. So now I'm firing. 
And I've got this cool little Gatling gun, so it sounds like a machine gun. He's shooting at me with a laser. My gun sounds cool. Uh, the starting gun doesn't use ammo, so don't worry about that yet. Starting ammo is really cheap, too, so don't worry about that. So yeah, same, just like me, shields, armor, structure, and I just blew it up. It's gone. So we're going to stop. Okay, so we blew it up, and where it was is wreckage. So now we need to close on the wreckage. We need to get within 250 meters, or 2,500 meters. So when you get close enough, this will light up, and you can open it. And he's got tritanium. Tritanium is just an ore. You can sell it. It's just something to start with the tutorial. Oops. Okay. So that's my cargo, and that's its cargo, and I can just drag it over. And now it's in my cargo bay. So the wreckage changed colors. That means it's empty. Mm -hmm. So it's given us a couple other guys to practice on here. Petty thieves. I'm going to take care of them real quick just so I can show you a little more combat. So my guy's going 375, 380 meters a second, super fast. I mean, that's a third of a kilometer a second, so a kilometer every four seconds. I mean, that's fast. But it doesn't seem that way because they're 31 kilometers away. This is a scale of space. You know what? I'm not going to worry too much about that. It wants me to head back to the station. So right click on empty space to bring up the contextual menu and there's only one station in this system. So stations is there. It's the Re Republic University School. So we're going to want to dock with it. I'm going to click dock. So my guy is going to align. It says warp drive active. And he's going. So he's nosing towards this station and then he's... Okay, now I'm warping. So now we're moving in astro units a second. That is way faster than the speed of light. Again, it feels slow because space is really big and light moves slower than you think. But we're on our way to the station. We're going to dock with it when we get there. We'll pass the planets. They're pretty cool. So these are other guys in the starter corporation that puts you in, and we'll go over that in a bit. But they're green to me, because they're in the same corp. Corporations are like guilds in other games. Alright, so we're docked in a station. You can look around, it's just kind of a default background for station. It shows you what ship you're in. Uh, okay. Let's just go through here. So now in stations, you can look at your items in your hangar. I don't have anything, but I can pull the stuff off my ship. You right click on your ship. Open cargo bay. Alternatively, you can double click on your ship. And then I can drag the items into my item hangar and they'll be in the ship unlimited space in your hangar on a station you just have to come back to that station to pick it up and I just did that just did that alright so this is the fitting of your ship when you click this it shows you your spaceship and it shows you all the slots it has that are going to be highlighted a little lighter. So you have high slots, medium slots, and low slots. Now remember earlier when we right clicked on this and got it show info? So you go to fitting, and now it tells us it needs a low power slot. It uses 10 CPU, so I've got 20, like 18 CPU to spare, and 2 megawatts of power. I got plenty of power on the power grid. The only thing is I don't have the skill yet. That's not going to train for nine more minutes. 
So, but this is where I'd put it right here. I don't have the skills to use it, but it's just that easy. So we're going to hit next again. Okay, so I'm ahead of the tutorial. At this point, it expected this to be done. But it's not going to uh, ding me for not being ready. What it just did is it gave me more skill books. So I'm going to inject them, which will add them to basically put them in my brain but untrained and I'll go to my character sheet and I'm going to train after current Q and that's gonna add it here and we'll, we'll just do it the easy way so you open the skill training queue and I'm gonna drag it above mechanics since this one's only gonna take 10 minutes and the other one was engineering so shield management that's half an hour so we're gonna put it under repair systems I know half an hour seems like a lot, but really it's a very small amount of time. The time you put in this game kind of adds up. And then also, see, I've been playing for since 2005, so I've got most of my skills take a month plus to train. Don't get daunted by that, though. All your cool skills would, are early on, you're already going to have. By the time you're doing that, you're, you know, you're flying ships the size of moons, titans, and stuff like that, if you want. Let's see. Alright, so we're going to apply. So now all those are going to train. Yeah, do your tutorial mission to get you all starting items, cool stuff like that. Okay, now it wants to train you the training queue, which I've already done. So, 5 hours and 22 minutes to train everything in the queue, but it can go up to 24 hours, so I can just keep dumping stuff in there. And I always look at what the skill does to see if it's worth it. So, Mimitar Frigate itself doesn't do anything, but when you... Fl well, we'll I just realized I haven't explained what frigates are. We'll go over that here in a second. I know you know it's a ship, but the sizes are different. So yeah, every skill will have prerequisites, just like items. So when you click on them and you go into prerequisites, it'll tell you what skills so that, uh, it requires before you can train it. And that's turned into a yellow circle now, because that means I have the skill, but it's not high enough. That means I'm training it, but I don't have it to one yet. It's a good way to keep tabs on if you've already bought a skill book. Yeah, and mostly you buy them. So now it's telling me how to pick missions. Real quick, though, I'm going to show you the market. So over here is a market button. Once I click it, I'm going to be able to see everything for sale in the region. The region's pretty big. So right now it's set to station, but I'm going to set it to region. So everything's in categories. And I want to show you ships. So all sorts of cool ship types, and you'll get to know them as you play because that's kind of your driving force if you're a PV, if you're a combat pilot, or a scanning pilot, or even a mining pilot because you're going to want a bigger miner ship. You always want to get the next ship. So everything you do is going to gear towards getting a new, a newer, better ship. So right now we can fly frigates. That's the starting smallest ship in the game, not counting shuttles and other little tiny ships that don't fight. But that's the smallest combat or utility ship in the game. Now as you saw before we were Mimitar. All ships are categorized by race except for mining ships. So these are all the Mimitar frigates and they all cost a certain amount of isk. See I've got very little isk. You go to your wallet. So I've got 5,000 isk. I can't afford anything. That's why you gotta do the missions. When you click on it, Rifter's the coolest frigate in the game, by the way, and that's Mimitar, <laughs> in my opinion, at least. You can get a good idea what it looks like. You can get its description. 
So when I was saying that the Mimitar frigate skill doesn't do anything on its own, the ships themselves will tell you what it does. So if I have Mimitar frigate skill trained up, for every level I have it, I get another 5% bonus to damage and 7.5% bonus to tracking. Um, so that means I just do more damage and my guns are more accurate. So the higher I get my frigate skill, the more damage and more accurate my guns. That's pretty, pretty straightforward. Everything's here in the market. Play with the market, look at the market. It's pretty cool. There's a lot to it. The entire economy in this game is player driven. You can be a part of that. You can build almost any item in this game. So we're going to go through and show the agents. We're going to do how to receive and run a mission before I call an end to this video. So it's got me onto agents. So it wants me to double click them. This guy's in the way. So when I did that, it brought up another window. I know there's a lot of windows in this game. It's kind of daunting. Uh, but they all move. You can kind of make them a little transparent to get them out of the way. It's cool, though, because if you think about a real spaceship, a real spaceship would probably have 20 different monitors. So we're tr trying, you know, or 100 or whatever. So we're trying to put as many, as much information as possible onto your computer monitor. And, you know, it's difficult, but we make it work. All right, so this is the mission that she's outlined for me. She wants me to, this is the agent. She wants me to go to this location, which is here in the system. My current location is home. It's the name of the solar system I'm in. So home, so that's where this, the mission's at. This is how, what I'll get, I'll get 24,000 credits, which will be a long way to buy one of those ships. And if I complete it within an hour and a half, I'll get an extra 23,000 credits. So it behooves you to do the missions as quickly as you can. So we're going to accept this mission. And we're going to close this window. Going to go ahead and hit next here. So my journal is now blinking. That means there's a new entry in it. So I've accepted a quest. Endless Battle, the one she gave me. And we can click on it if we ever forget what you're supposed to do. I need to warp to this location, kill people. Once they're dead, I come back. Straightforward. So, pretty easy. Okay, so you click this button to undock when you're in a station. Big undock button. And again, do the tutorial, even though I'm showing it to you, it gives you all this starting equipment. And because if you've watched this video first, you'll just be able to shoot right through it. Or if you forget anything I've told you, you can read it right here and it will tell you again. So it wants me to right click in space. And now there's this new category, Agent Missions. So the Endless Battle. So the encounter is where the fight is. The agent home base is where you return it in. So I want to go to the encounter. I want to go fight. So I'm going to warp within zero. I'm going to bring them over here. While I'm in warp, I'm going to go over these real quick. Um, these are your chat windows. The blinking ones just means someone's talked. And you can click in it and see what they have to say. You can type and talk with people. You can always talk. When you start a new character, it puts you in rookie help. You can ask any question. They have moderators or, or volunteers in there that'll do their best to answer. Corporations are like guilds, but except that you are always, always in a corporation. I got that uh, whole upgrades trained, so I can go back and equip that after this mission. So you're always in a corporation. Later you can join a player one. I very recommend looking up EVE University and join, seeing if you can join them because they do a lot of group activities and basically that's what keeps you in this game uh, is a community having people to play with because if you're alone um, doing the same missions doing the same mining while it's cool for a while you really want people to do it it makes the game more fulfilling uh, so corporations are good this is a beginner corporation so everyone in here 
is either a new player or somebody who just didn't want to join another corporation. Local is being able to talk to people in the same solar system. So the cool thing about local is whenever you go into a new solar system, it'll tell you who's in there with you. Later, if you start doing PvP, it'll tell you who to look out for. Everyone with a green star means they're in the newbie corporation with me. Okay, so there's the saboteur. So let's click on him. He's on my overview. And then let's target him. Okay, so he's out of my targeting range. He's so far away that I can't target on him. So we're going to get closer. Just telling you how to do all this, which is what I'm going to do. Warped. Okay. I'm going to stop right now. First thing I want any of you to do is hit escape and bring up this menu. I want you to go to general settings and there's this auto target back. What that does is when something or somebody targets you, your computer will automatically target up to one of them. I want you to turn that to zero. I want you to do that because this is a game where you can do anything and other players will target you. And if you target them back, that's giving them permission to shoot you. And you don't want to do that, especially if you're just in a starting ship. But if you put that to zero and they target you, then nothing will happen. Um, it's just one of the realities of the game. Just always remember to do that. Oop, we're going to close that. Okay, so it's shooting at me. We're going to get back to orbit. We're going to target. Usually these guys are going to be doing more damage. Oh, I'm going to show you another cool ability. Once you click on it, you get this cool little look at. So you kind of look at their ship. This is basically an Amar starting ship. Amar ships are probably the coolest looking in the game. They're very sleek. They're all based around their holy symbology. While the Mimitar ships are accused of being held together with duct tape. So if you like Millennium Falcon type ships, there you go. So we're going to start shooting. We're going through the shields. We blew it up. Now, it's not solid white, which means we did not get any loot from that kill. Not a big deal. So it wants me to dock back at the station. Remember, right click in space, agent mission, agent home base, dock. A uh, wallet here is telling me I've got money. So when you kill pirates, you typically get a bounty. Uh, because they were just starting pirates, I got a hundred isk. Not very much. You're getting the millions, hundreds of millions of this really fast. Um, so it, it takes a little bit for it to process and get to you. And because I finished the mission, my journal is blinking. And if I were to click that, it tells me that my objective is complete. So I can go and dock and talk to the agent again. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Okay. So it's going to show us how to complete the mission. So we're going to talk to the agent, double click on her, or you can right click and start conversation. And we click on complete mission. So now I have an extra 50 ish thousand. Well, once you click on it, it will. I totally misread that. Okay, yeah. I have another 50,000 disc. For some reason, I thought I had 50,000 when I had 5,000. My bad. Okay, so I'm at 52,000 disc now. Pretty cool. So you can request another mission. Real quick, 
because that skill trained, I can now equip the civilian damage module. So I'm going to grab it, drag it into my low slot, and now it's on my ship. So when I undock, you're going to see a little icon for it. So I'm going to request the mission. Okay, so this is a courier mission. What's going to happen here is it's going to give me a little code, a little something. I always give you something in this case, an encryption code book. I want you to pick it up at one spot in this case where I'm getting the mission. So I'll grab it here and drop it off in another, which is uh, going to be one system over. The reward's going to be a little less. Courier missions are generally quicker. So um, if I do it within an hour, I'll get another 18. So we'll accept it. And then we'll close this. So now I have something new in my item, so we'll open up my cargo bay, drag it, close it, so it wants me to undock again. Okay, so because I have to go to another solar system, we want to open up the journal and open up the storyline quest. Now it's telling me to go to, um, I can never pronounce some of these, this solar system here, Ami Anaka 9, Ami Anaka. Um, now if you go and look at your overview, you'll see a Stargate to Ami Anaka. So it's really close, it's one jump away. Let's say it were two jumps away or three jumps and you couldn't immediately see it here. In that case, we can right click on this and hit set destination. So now what it's done is it's programmed it into our autopilot to take us there. So now there's this autopilot button right here that you can Autopilot's click. Engaged. Um, so the autopilot will jump you to within 10 kilometers of the gate, um, burn to the gate, and then jump through for you. And when it gets to the next system, it'll disengage. I find that a little slow. We're going to let it run its course for this time since I'm showing it to you. But it's always quicker to go through the process yourself. When you set destination, the wormhole you need will be highlighted yellow. And that makes it very easy to find. And then instead of autopilot, you're just going to right click on it and warp to zero. This will save you time because as I said, autopilot jumps to 10 kilometers and then flies that distance. So in my case, at almost 400 meters a second, that's 20 seconds of travel time that I can cut out just by warping to zero. And if you're on a slower ship, a freighter, an industrial ship, a battleship, you really, you really don't want to have to wait for that. So, but I put it in autopilot and it's going to do all the work for me. So we can just look around. Um, anything with a white cross on it is an NPC ship. These are the guys that will come to blow you up if you try to start mischief. So I've got a few. Okay, so I got within. I'm close enough, so we're going to go right through. So now what it's done is it's instantly traveled me to another solar system. So that possibly hundreds or thousands of light years away. Uh, well, actually, no, not thousands. I think a couple light years away. But even at, as fast as I can move in warp, that's still a very long time. Months and months and months of travel. So it's very cool that it just warped me there. Um, I'm cloaked. As you can see, it's hard to see me right now. So that'll last for a small amount of time. Um, you, and to uncloak, you just move. But what that does is when you're in enemy space and you jump through, it gives you a little bit of time to get your bearings before you move. So real quick, I want to show you this. This is that damage control I equipped. If I click on it, it activates. So you don't really see what it does. It's very slow. Um, it takes very little power, so you can always leave it on. Every time you change systems, though, you'll need to turn it back on. So it's just every That's a wonderful word to hear, skill training completed. So now it's on to a 30-minute one. My shields are stronger just because I waited. 
So I'll show you how you can tell what things like that do. So there's my fittings. And when you do look at your fittings, you're going to see effective hit points. And you're going to see all of your resists on all your levels. There's a shield resist, armor resist, hull resist. Don't worry too much about it now. But when I turn that on, everything goes up. I now have 502 effective hit points because I can now soak more damage before it actually hurts me. So that's a good way to tell what stuff like that does. So I'm in the system I need to be for the courier mission. Uh, right click on space, agent missions, drop off, warp. warp. Well, it's going to warp to zero and then I'll just tell it to dock. Gave me a new skill book. Give me a skill book that I can't use. So when you click on it, you go to prerequisites, and I need industry level one before I can equip it. Cool warp effect. That's a moon. Not a space station. That's a space station. Um, I didn't set it to dock automatically, so you click on it and you get a docking button. So I just did that. Or you can right click on it to dock. So. Agents of interest are agents that are not in this system, but you can still talk to them. Because this is a courier mission, this is the agent who gave me the mission. So I can talk to her and tell her, hey, I've, I got the item, I'm here, let's complete it. So I just got the money. Sometimes they'll give you items, sometimes they'll give you other stuff. In this case, they just gave me money. That is that. There is more to it, the tutorials, but I'm going to end it there because this video is getting kind of long. And I really recommend you go, you get the trial. Uh, the trial is good for 14 free days. If you think you want more time, um, for I can get you 21 free days, any player can. Um, simply just send me a message via YouTube or on the website, VG Mechanica, and I'll invite you, give you a buddy invite, and that will give you 21 free days instead of 14 free days. Uh, at the same time, it's not like I'm doing it for nothing. If you were to decide you like the game enough to play, it would give me a free month. So. In that case, if you have a friend or somebody that plays, you know, maybe offer to have them give you the buddy invite instead. Uh, but, you know, I, I never mind giving out buddy invites. It's something I'll do. And it'll also uh, add me to your friends list, I think. Um, I guess one more thing worth mentioning is unlike other MMORPGs, where when you start the game, you decide which server you want to join, this entire game, the entire 200,000 player base, is all on one server together. The game will tell you how many people are logged on. Usually you'll see anywhere from 30 to 70,000 people logged on. Uh, but they're all on the same server at the same time. And that's awesome. So thanks for watching. Uh, leave any comments on, on, you know, any other questions you want me to do for future videos. And I'll try to think of other things to show. I'll probably use uh, my current character in any future videos as uh, I've already gone over the basics. So I don't really need to use this one anymore. Thanks for watching.